Hello, and welcome back to Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding. I am Dr. Abstract, and this is our last lesson. Oh, no. Well, there's so much more to experience and to do with JavaScript. So, um, yeah, hang out for sure. I hope you're, you're getting used to working on the canvas as well. It's very colorful, very cool. We're going to end off this, uh, this series with a bang. <laughs> All right, let me show you what I mean and we'll see see if you can can guess. Okay, so we'll come on down. We'll look at examples. Padoop. Examples and how about we'll go oh, here's here's something. Let's try this one out. Okay, there's one example. Boingada boingada bingada boingada. Let's try another one. Hmm. Here, ah, here. So we can tap on this thing. Oh. Hmm. I wonder what we could be talking about. Uh, here. Whoosh. Look at that. You can pick this up and drag it along like so. Whoosh. Do you see something in there? Whoosh. You can also shoot or pick up those little uh, space rocks. <laughs> okay, here's another example. Mm. <laughs> See, I'm not sure, sure if we're out of them. Uh huh. So it's not the path here. Oh, it's that thing. That thing that's uh, going along there. That is called an emitter. Uh, emitter so can also make this. So this emitter is following my mouse. And whoosh. Isn't that pretty? So instead of just drawing particles, we're uh, we're making uh, it, the particles draw a line as they go. Neat, huh? So uh, you can see like a little mini emitter site. Those all all those things were emitters right here called particles. So this is in the, the examples particles. And even this is an emitter. As we roll over here, we're emitting this a copy of the image that is here, and we're emitting it and making it shrink and go far. So remember the. Whoa. We can change the color of the particles that are emitting. Nice. And the fire is wiggling, like there's a little bit of wiggle on the fire, and that is caused by a thing called a, a thing called a sink. This also has a sink. As these little snowflakes move around, you see how they're now all kind of going over to the right? That's what snow does. I don't think it's working on my mouse. I think this is a random sync. Maybe it's my mouse based. But I think this is a random sync. You can press these things and bring up each little snowflake. <laughs> and there it goes. Whoosh. Neat, huh? So here we're emitting custom, we're emitting a custom function that builds snowflakes. And so we're building a whole bunch of individual ones and they're swirling around following a sink. This is sort of similar to our standard. Oh, this one also has a sink. A sink is like the particles want to go towards it, almost like it's gravity, a gravity well. And so what we're doing here is we're, uh, we have the sink directly behind the emitter. So the emitter particles are all going out and then they're coming back around towards the sink and we're adjusting the sink uh, the sink strength as we go. We can emit. So these are two emitters. One is the emit, that's an emitter right there, and then the fireworks are also emitters. And we have two types of fireworks. We have the fireworks that is a whole bunch of little particles like that, and then we have the fireworks that are a bunch of little lines like that, drawn lines of different colors. Here's a nice one. This one is drawing lines, and again, the, um, the sink is in behind. So as the lines go out, they want to come back. They're attracted by the sink, and they come back around and create these 
uh, beautiful like atom like parts cool huh now we just recently used an emitter here in an app let's go take a look at some code for that this has been a lot of talk in the introduction so uh, that's a timer here's the emitter dot spurt where's the emitter there's the emitter right here so it's a new emitter and what we're emitting here is a circle that has those properties or parameters and then we're scaling the circle to be 1 in the X but 0.2 in the Y so we're squashing the circle down we're making the gravity go negative so now things will go up we're not going to shrink the particle as it as it fades away and we're making this always go at an angle of negative 90 so it's going to point up to start if we don't have that it points in a random direction but you can specify a range many of these things you can specify ranges and we're saying don't emit as fast as usual this is every 150 milliseconds by default I think the emitter is set at 50 milliseconds maybe even less and then we're animating each each particle that gets made we're animating its registration point a little bit and we're starting paused and if we start paused then it will spurt so this is when the timer completes in this app the timer is going to complete and then we say emitter dot spurt and we spurt a certain number of them or we can spurt for a certain <laughs> certain time <laughs> nice method name <laughs> the old spurt method <laughs> and we're locating this uh, on the timer because that's where we're going to start this we're moving it a little bit and we're dropping it down okay so let's um see the app that this is and it's not even really a fun app per se it's it's this app right here so I'll close that stuff down it's called flexor size and <laughs> that's what I need to do next <laughs> so decided to make an app to help me exercise and the idea is that you can set the amount of time that you want to do leg kicks so right now I'm going to start off at like quite light I'm going to exercise and do all these things for five seconds <laughs> each one of them <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Uh, obviously, I'd, I'd set them to be longer, but um, for demonstration purposes, it will then go through all of these, and when it's done, it will put the emitter over here by the total time. So the emitter then will shoot up and animate its registration point so it curves to follow the man. Are you ready? Now you're going to hear some noises. Leg kicks, arm swings, neck circles. Squats, 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 leg yeah. and back stretches. Dancing, yeah, chow, cha cha. Psychedelic dancing, yeah, Ooh, cha cha. Stretches and cool down. Okay, are you ready? It's almost Stick here. Stops and push ups. Ground dancing, yeah, ground dancing. Here it comes. Yeah. Nice, huh? Did you see that? So if we wanted to test that a bit more or see it again, what we could do is don't start with the emitter paused. So comment that out and we'll refresh here. And there they are. Neat, huh? So that's what we're taking a look at today is how to create an emitter. Uh, we've been following along the Zim lessons, which are down here in school. And we've taken a look at display objects. How to put things on the screen so that we can see them. These go on the, the canvas on a stage. We took a look at how we can configure those and we can either pass in parameters or these things called configuration objects. and uh, and animation as well. So we took a look at animation, functions and events, the basics of, of how we build things and how we interact with things to find out if something's happened, like a click. Abstraction, a very important principle in all coding. Arrays and loops, and then we use these to demonstrate abstraction. 
conditionals and debugging. So conditionals gives us uh, an if statement, an if else statement that helps us with our flow, the flow of our app or what we're building, the flow of our, our code. And then how to build. So we looked at a series of things to, to build there um, and controls. We've been looking at a lot of different controls because we've called this creative coding. So we're wanting to show you what has been built with JavaScript to like those particles. The, the particle emitter was built with JavaScript, built with code. Now you're able to use this now, but you're also getting a sense that, hey, even if you don't use Zim, the types of things that can be made with JavaScript and they're all wonderful to be able to create things with uh, with parallax and particle emitters and things like that that's uh, it's amazing all right so uh, controls a particle emitter is a control we're controlling the particles so let's uh, go into some code now and try her out we'll go to the code section right here which is also found back on the front of zim and then we'll copy a minimal template like that. Doesn't really matter. Copy. And we got it. Which one we copy? We gotta copy the big one as well. We're going into a text editor and in an empty empty file here we'll paste and this will say lesson 08 dash eight. Hmm, that's nice. We're bringing in CreateJS and Zim. And then we're starting up a new frame here. And let's see what a basic emitter looks like. Now, if we didn't know anything about it, it's nice to have consistency. If we didn't know anything about it, we would say something like new emitter. That's what it's called. We would put the round brackets after because here we're using the new keyword to create an object from the emitter class. The emitter class starts with a capital E and we would chain on a dot center and see what happens. So this is how other things in Zim are working. Hey, new button. Hey, new circle dot center. Hey new emitter dot center and let's have a look we'll open this up in a browser there it is the default emitter okay so we're done that's the end of the lesson <laughs> do you believe me <laughs> it's like ah, <laughs> come on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we could make the emitter follower mouse and we'd have like a magic wand kind of thing. We'd use the motion controller control to be able to do that. Or you could hard code that with, with uh, an event of some sort. There's a mouse move event or actually in Zim we use a stage mouse move event and that can have uh, follow the mouse around. Or like I said, we could make that emitter move with with a, a motion controller. Remember how we had that start paused? If we don't want to see the emitter yet, say, why don't we make it so when we click on the stage, anywhere we click, we will make the emitter sparkle or something. <laughs> Sound fun? So there's the emitter. We may need reference to it later. So in JavaScript, if we're trying to remember something so that we can refer to it later, we would put it in a const or a variable. So this happens to be a const. It, uh, const emitter is equal to. So we use the assignment operator. We're, do <laughs> we're doing a bit of review, huh? <laughs> you know, you've only had, uh, whatever, 30 lessons, over so 30 videos, all these lessons. Uh, hopefully you remember the assignment operator. So there we are assigning the emitter to that. And remember chaining, for this to work properly, the dot center needs to return the object that it's on. So when it centers, the returning value will get put into the emitter and that will be our emitter object. In many places in JavaScript you're going to see this where you don't do that. You say hey just make the object and then you would say emitter.center 
All right, so just watch that. You've been working in the Zim framework, and we've built Zim so that you can chain things for the most part. In other frameworks or in, in raw JavaScript and other things that you may need to do, perhaps you don't have that luxury. We consider it a luxury. And you might have to just make the object and later put a method on the object. All right. So we've got that emitter. Great. It's centered, but we want to start paused. In many situations, you would have to, if we want to get to the start paused on the emitter, would have to go undefined comma un, undefined comma etc all the way until you get to the start paused parameter so dot 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 and then you would say true for start paused that's a lot of work uh, sometimes you can get away with uh, saying after you make it you might say emitter dot start paused Actually, it's a pause event, pause, and that would work too. I'm not sure. This might spit out one particle. <laughs> the emitter the emitter is really fast. I hope not. But that's a two-step process. And so sometimes you make the object, and then there aren't very many parameters here. Because parameters can sometimes be a pain in the neck. You've got to, because you have to, if you might have to put all those default values in there, or all those nulls. So I usually pass in null, null, but it turns out with ES6 they made the default way of passing in null undefined. And I don't know exactly why, so undefined, I guess it's okay, undefined will trigger a default parameter in ES6. Null will put the value of null into, a, into the parameter and it won't trigger the default parameter. So, uh, you know, whatever. What we decided to do in Zim is not force you to go to a method or a property later on, but rather allow you a nice easy way to get to the parameters. And that was with an object literal, that's JavaScript object literal, and we would use the property here of start paused because that matches the parameter name. And then we would say colon true. So this is our way of jumping right to any parameter or putting any number of parameters that we want without worrying about the order of them. We do have to though know the name of them. And so that makes it a little bit longer sometimes. So we're gonna start that emitter paused. Um, and then what we'll do is when we click, we will we will show the emitter. Stage dot on, um, mouse down. Now, this is a tricky one, a little bit in the, on the canvas. Mouse down, call this function. So, here's an arrow function there. So, this is an event, the stage dot on, but a mouse down needs to be mouse downed on an object on the stage. We have another one called stage mouse down. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is create jest based. And I mean, it makes sense. It's create jest based, which is what Zim is based on. So create JS gives us the uh, base objects like containers and shapes and then, um, or shape, sorry. Uh, then Zim added a bunch of actual shapes like rectangles, circles, triangles, blobs, etc. cetera. Um, and create JS gave us the event model here. To, to work. So that's, uh, thank you very, yes, big thank you very much to CreateJS. Probably should have been thanking CreateJS more in these lessons. And also, of course, thank you to JavaScript. <laughs> uh, amazing work in both cases. Anyway, so stage.on, on is a method there, and we're applying the stage mouse down event. Here is the function that it will call. We've talked about functions. You could call um, stage down like that, capital D, stage down. That's called camel case in there. There we go. And then you could say function stage down equals, oops, uh, wrap brackets. <laughs> there we go. 
So now whenever we stage down, it will call the function stage down. Note that we didn't execute or call it right there because that would call it right on this line. If you, as soon as you put the round brackets after, it gets called. So all we're doing is saying which function to call, and here's the function it's going to call. We can put this afterwards for a while for a couple of reasons. One, the stage mouse down hasn't happened yet. We, like the code is going to run, and it's going to be like at least seconds later until somebody mouses down on the stage. So by that time, this function will be there. But we could even do this. We could even call the function stage mouse down right there, and it would call this function right away, even though this is afterwards. And that's because of hoisting. So all these things are back in the lessons. Uh, we are we tend to in JavaScript we tend not to do our events in two steps, but rather just put a function here to call directly. So this is called an arrow function. We could also use an anonymous function. There's an anonymous function. It's basically the same thing. The arrow function has certain things that you can do in it that make it sort of fun to use, and it's new in ES6. So again, all those things as well we've looked at in the lessons. But here's our stage mouse down. So now we need to put the emitter at the same location as our mouse. Often we have an event that we can capture here called the, uh, the uh, event object. Sorry, it's not an event. We have an object there. <laughs> That's what the problem was. We have an object that we can collect there, a parameter. We're collecting a parameter, and in that parameter is going to be placed an object that tells us more about the event, such as what is the target, e.target. e.target, in this case, will be the stage, I think. Uh, yeah, do we have anything else? No, we don't have any. Oh, we have the emitter, uh, but it's not on. Well, it's centered, but not running. So I don't think uh, we're going to click on the emitter. So e.target would be the stage. Um, sometimes we're given the e.stageX, um, it's called. So createJS gives us the e.stageX and e.stageY. But at the moment, <laughs> have to sneeze. <laughs> there we go. At the moment, we've introduced recently. We introduced Retina, Zim Retina, which gives us uh, vector quality at any magnitude uh, of scale, and we really like that for the most part. Anyway, for for the vectors, uh, we really like that, but it's messed up the the results of E dot stage X. So Zim has remedy that temporarily perhaps but remedied it by giving us a frame dot mouse x like that. Mouse x. So if we ask for a frame dot mouse x and a frame dot mouse y at any time we'll be given the x and y position. So we're going to need that. Anyway that means we don't need the e at the moment. All right so frame dot mouse x that gives us the x and y or the x obviously frame dot mouse y would give us the y so if we want to place an object at that location we start off with the name of the object we're placing which is emitter like so we could use uh, we could say emitter dot x is equal to that would be setting the x property of the emitter equal to the frames mouse x, which would look good. For this to work, uh, we would want to up here, instead of centering the emitter, we would want to center reg the emitter, like that. I think, uh, it may be that recently, I think we made some changes where we automatically center reg an emitter, because people forget. It's sort of strange to imagine that the emitter is in a default 100 by 100 rectangle and yet it's emitting from the middle of that. So anyway, uh, either way, center reg would be fine. Then when we place the X of the emitter at the frame's mouse X, it will be good. And if we do the same thing for the Y, like so, at the mouse Y, it would set the Y property of the emitter to the frame's mouse Y. In Zim, we have a nice, easy, chainable method. This is not chainable. 
when we whenever we apply properties, it's not chainable or shouldn't be chained. But um, we, we could do it that way. And in this case, we're not really needing to chain to anything particularly. So there's no absolute uh, advantage to go to the emitter, emitter dot loc like that. I suppose the advantage could be, uh, let's see if it's less characters, comma, and probably is. There we go. So uh, what do you think? There's the difference there. Emitter dot loc. So locate the emitter at the frames mouse x and the frames mouse y. That's the x and the y. So there we are doing it in one. Uh, this is 40 characters. These are 60 characters. So I suppose that's an absolute advantage. Okay, so that will emit there, that will uh, put the emitter there. Oh, we actually do want to also spurt. So we're going to locate the, the emitter, but we're also going to spurt the emitter. So that means we could chain like this dot spurt. And we've started paused. Let's spurt 10. There we go. Note that the semicolon, which ends a statement, this is all one statement. The semicolon goes at the end. It cannot go there. If it goes there, it means this statement is finished. And we'd be trying to start a new statement with dot spurt, which what are we dotting to? We need an object here. We do have an object here because loc returns the emitter loc returns the emitter, therefore dot spurt is on the emitter. All right, let's try our route. We don't need a stage.update because the animation of the emitter will handle the updating for us. So we open up here, refresh, we click, hey, we click, hey, we click, hey, bottom left corner, click, woo. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Neat. Now, emitters sometimes, uh, admittedly, <laughs> look a little bit better on dark. So let's do that. We'll put, uh, we can even put black, very, very dark. Wouldn't it be weird if there was a color darker than black? Is there? I think there was one. What was that? It was like some, something that didn't emit any light at all, but I, I guess it'd still be called black. So there we go. Nice. All right. Let's talk about the types of things that we can emit and how that works then. This has been uh, not bad. We're, we're sort of reviewing. It's our very last lesson, our very last video. We're reviewing some of the things as we go. Is that okay? <laughs> I hope so. Hope you've had a good time with these lessons and we'll continue, continue on. All right, so how about this emitter here? And what we're going to do is drop these things down so that we can see them and make a list of them in a sense. We could continue to put a comma in here and carry on, but we'd end up typing right off the side there. So let's drop these down like so. When we drop them down, we make sure to indent them. So all of the things between this block of code here is indented. This indenting is kind of a fake indenting in that um, it's, it's a single statement and we're indenting to show that these two things are on the emitter. But uh, I don't think it's, it could be considered an official indentation. Whereas this block of code, definitely we want to indent the things that are inside of the squiggly brackets. And here we are inside squiggly brackets. Uh, but the squiggly brackets are different, aren't they? Right? This is an object literal where we're putting a, a property name and a property value. This is a function block, like a block of code where we just put one statement after another. So try not to get confused about those things. Sometimes, sometimes we do. All right, so start paused colon true. Next, we could say what we want to emit. So that would be the OPJ. Now the way you would know what that is, is you would go to the documents. As a matter of fact, it might be nice to go to the documents now. We'll open that up, hook back to Zim. Go to the docs here. 
and type in emitter. E it's probably good enough. Nope, remove from, okay, it's getting too much. E is it two M's or one M? <laughs> two M's? Nope. <laughs> 1M, emitter, and 2T. So you don't have to type the whole thing, just uh, enough. And I guess EM was too, too popular. So here's the emitter. Here are the parameters that we can use. And then in the docs, there's examples. There's then the information about the parameters. There's the methods that we can do, including the spurt method there. There's the properties that we can change, and the events that happen when things spurt or emit or decay. We can also go view the ZIM code. We can watch videos on it, and in many of the cases, there's there's more links there as well. Uh, like the ZIM bits, I think the emitter was built after the ZIM bits were, so that means there's no ZIM bits example with an emitter, but there's plenty of examples around. You might see some up here, up top, there could be. There's the examples to the particles. That was that little mini site that we showed. All right, so I'm going to copy this, copy, and come back in to Adam, and we'll paste them right up above the emitter here. There they are. Yeah, they're pretty lengthy, aren't they? But anyway, we'll, uh, uh, let's see, num life decay, decay start trace, well, we can put the shrink, fade and shrink should stay together. So go like this. And trace shift X, well, who cares really? Trace shift Y, the angle that might be of interest. Layers, animation, random, horizontal, vertical, possibly. Sync and sync force, yes, and cache and events and start paused, okay. There we go. So this lays them out for us so we can have a, a better look at what, uh, what we have that we can change. One of them here is the object, OBJ. So uh, we can say what we want to emit. Well, we could emit a bunch of new rectangles. New rectangle. And let's see what that looks like. That will be automatically black. So why don't we put it at, say, 10. And these are particles after all, and we will make them white particles. I can't remember if we have to center reg. We may want to. Uh, it may not make a difference, but there we are center regging as well. Now when we do there, let's take a look and see what happens. Because we have center regged the object, we may end up seeing that object on the stage the emitter is going to take a bunch of clones. So the emitter clones the objects, but the original object may still be seen. So let's see what happens. We're center regging the whole emitter, so let's have a look. We refresh here. No, I don't see anything. Does it emit? F11. We might be not seeing anything because of an error. No error. No pressing and no emitting. All right, let's go back and take a look and see what happened. So we're starting paused, but when we press, it's supposed to mouse down and spurt 10. Rectangles are white and center regged. Okay, so does it still spurt if we comment that out? So right now we're debugging. One of the first principles in debugging is simplify. Well we're simplifying <laughs> but another another good one is hey just go back to what we had that was working and <laughs> what have we changed since then so in a sense we're trying to find out where the problem could be so let's confirm that it, it wasn't something else that we typed i don't i can't remember quite what we typed so if we comment this line out we'll see if we're still uh, operating properly so we save that we come back and we refresh all right so that's on a press. Maybe a press dragged. Okay. So it should be fine. Uh, is our object called object? It is OBJ. And there's an OBJ. Let's just not bother center regging and see if new rectangle that is white. Oh, I see what it is. That's caught me a couple times. Well, the second time. A rectangle has two parameters. And it turns out white 
Uh, well, that could be a number anyway. It, it can't make a rectangle from that. Because <laughs> white is, um, quote, number sign FFFFF in, in, um, in, in behind white. That's what that is. So it doesn't know how wide number sign FFFFF is. All right, so we may still need the center reg. We can have white, but we need 10 by 10. All right, so when we debugged, bugs happened to everybody. Now, obviously, you know, it just happened to me. Um, bugs happened to everybody. One of the ways to solve it there was we go back to when it was working, and then we step by step uh, keep on building until it, you know, it works again. All right, so let's see what's here. We refresh. Uh, yeah, there it is. He has mentioned. So we st still, that's fine. But the very first one that we made here is sitting on the stage. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of too bad. I don't even know if we need to send a reg. It's unlikely that we'll be able to tell. The only, uh, and as a matter of fact, it is possible even that that Zim purposely sent to reg the objects uh, for us when when it comes to the emitter. Let's make this bigger and we'll see if we can see a difference uh, now. So we refresh here when I press it looks to me like those those rectangles are coming right out of the middle of where we pressed. So I suspect we're we're okay. We might be able to tell more if we set the dot alp to a point two or something like that to begin with. And we refresh here. I think it's hard hard to tell. <coughs> anyway, there is a solution to that. Uh, regard, if we need that center reg, center reg has a parameter called um, add like that. And we can set add to false. So remember what happened the last time we center regged. Let's do that again. We save that up. We're center regging the rectangle, and therefore everything that gets cloned will also have its registration point centered. And it shows up. And it's like, no, nah, we only want these to show up when we press. So a solution to that is add colon false. This will center the registration without adding it to the stage. Now, if you think about that, why do we add the, add the thing to the stage when we send a reg in the first place? Why didn't we make those two separate things? Why not dot add to and then dot center reg or dot center reg and then dot add to? I mean, we could do that. It would work fine, but it's two steps. So we found we were wanting to do that all the time. So we just said, oh, that's another thing about coding. We're lazy. You know, we're lazy because lazy is actually another word for efficient sometimes. <laughs> Interesting, huh? The good, the good aspects of lazy is efficiency. <laughs> um, so that's what we're trying to say there when we say coders or programmers are lazy. We're trying to say really that we're just really efficient. So if we can do something in one step rather than two, that's what we've done. So center reg automatically will center the registration point and center the object on whatever container you pass in or the stage by default and it actually adds it to the stage or whatever container you specify. All right so here we're saying please don't do the adding part <laughs> and now when we refresh here ping there's no rectangle there and indeed um, it's still working like so Ooh, it's kind of neat isn't it like a, I don't know pixel explosion very big pixel. <laughs> if the pixel is very big, it, it's like it shrinks us. Isn't that neat? Like we could still, that could still be a pixel, but we're shrunken to be, oh, it's less than a pixel. Ah, what excitement. All right. So, hmm, what next then? Right. We were looking at different things that we could emit. So there's the object. Now, we're not finished there, though, because, hey, uh, it's, it's just a white, a white square. What, what else can we do with this object? Well, every time it gets made, we could randomly pick a color between white and gray. <laughs> or more like pick a shade. And now we go whoop. And so now we're getting gray ones and white ones. What about... Um, spinning them. So we could 
animate them to spin. We could change them to be bright colors. We don't even need to do just a rectangle. We could pass a series or random things to this. Do you want to see how to do random objects? We would pass in basically an array of objects here. So, or we could store it here. We could say const, whoa, yes. Const objects is equal to an array. And we could put the rectangle in there. Let's drop it down. The rectangle in there, comma, and a new uh, circle. A squiggle, let's do a squiggle. I've never, I don't think I've ever made a squiggle <laughs> be emitted. I haven't emitted squiggles ever before. We'll see if it works. Uh, and then we will say start, oh no, uh, interactive, interactive, colon false on that. So otherwise it will also emit the little things to the controls for the squiggle, which isn't the best thing. So we get a comma there. So we're emitting a rectangle and a squiggle. Uh, the rectangle is going to either be white or gray and put that in there and we'll bring in objects and put that there. So now we're starting paused and we're emitting those objects and it will randomly choose from them. Boop. It will not. F12. Squiggle. Did you see it? A new squiggle. There we go. Now remember, U comes after Q. <laughs> I've never said it that way. It actually rhymes, doesn't it? U comes after Q. <laughs> there we go. So things you learn here when you think you're learning just JavaScript. Whoa, cool. That's weird. But what about something like the rotation? Oh, that's neat, isn't it? It's like water. I'd like those things to shoot up like a splash out of the water. Sound good? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, mind you, then the squiggles will also shoot up. But if I want them to shoot up rather than fall down, we can go to the emitter and say gravity colon uh, negative five or something like that. And everything starts, the emitter starts with a default force. So let's try setting the force to zero. And then it won't shoot out. It will kind of start and almost like fall up now. So are you ready? And I mean, <laughs> ooh, that's neat. Do you see what it's doing? It's, it's, um, it's not random in its, its push now. Uh, the force is also uh, randomly applied, so it's an outward force. Let's put a little bit of a, a outward force there. One, and see if that gets sort of randomly applied. Yeah, now do you see how some are moving to the left, some are moving to the right? Maybe we don't want to decay. The decay, uh, it's just like, this is what it's like as you build. It's just like more and more and more, more wonder. Yay, and you can do all, all these little settings here. Um, I don't want to shrink, so I don't mind decaying, but I'm going to say shrink colon false. And that's a Boolean. We say, no, I don't want to shrink. Okay, and as a matter of fact, we might, we could animate so it grows. There. Why do we have a square in there? <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, but we can also rotate things. So we can start them randomly. We can animate the rotation or we can set the rotation to be random. So there's a random like this, colon. So in other words, the things that we want to randomize is the rotation. The rotation has a, uh, the lowest to the highest. I think that's how you do it. And let's see what happens here. Oh, neato mosquito. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, isn't that weird? Look at that thing that we made. And we're just like messing around. That's what it's like to code in JavaScript if you're working on the canvas. Now, <laughs> therein lies the rub. There are so many people coding in JavaScript not on the canvas, and it's a different world. It's a very text-based world. Uh, text and images, fine, but 
they don't really intermix. They don't really change. On the canvas, the canvas is one big image that we're dynamically changing the image, not just swapping one image for another, but we're painting with JavaScript. And we're using our creativity and making almost anything we want. And it's, it's, it's wonderful. So I hope you let others know and, uh, you know, just kind of go, yeah! <laughs> Our last goodbye for now, but of course there's many, many other videos in Zim. We've got longer series called Explore, so Zim Explore, where we explore different things in Zim. There's the code in five minutes, so that's very short. The Explore is very long. These have been right in the middle, although this one is more like an Explore. We did a long, a long last video, I hope you don't mind, on particle emitters. I am Dr. Abstract. Thank you so much for taking these, uh, these lessons, and like I said, please share and keep on building a Zim. Come join us, zimjs.com slash slack. Cheers. May the forces of groovity be with you.